You may be seated. Praise God. Obedience to the Holy Spirit. Thank God this morning because our pastor recognized with this power of God moving in the place. We don't have to stick with the program. But be obedient to the Spirit and let Him have His way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Some of us have probably just come out of the darkest season of our lives. Some are going through while others have not yet entered. I have come today to encourage and strengthen you with the word of God. I greet our district overseer, Bishop Dr. Samuel Daniel and his wife, Sister Malita Daniel, our senior bishop, Bishop David Rogers and Sister Doreen, his lovely wife, my fellow pastors and their families, and everyone gathered in the sanctuary today. Both good to be here. Hallelujah. As the year draws near to a close, we tend to reflect and look back on events that took place in our lives and some of us plan for the new year to make resolutions. Others look back and say, I am never going back there. I will go forward no matter what. While some look back and pity themselves saying, what's the use of even trying? Why should I live? Why is God punishing me so? Now I don't know this morning which category you fall into. But no matter which one you are in, pay keen attention to what I'm about to say. If we are observant enough, we will recognize many lessons that God is teaching us by things around us. And sometimes they are unlearned, these lessons, because they are so simple. So at the end of this message, I will ask you to make a confession. A text today is taken from the latter part of verse 3 of Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, the son of David. And it is often referred to as the preacher. One thing we recognize is with King Solomon's writings is that he writes in Proverbs. Ecclesiastes follows the book of Proverbs. And if we look at the beginning of chapter 11, it begins with, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Probably you don't give much attention to it. But then you recognize what he's saying 
If you give of what you have to others, it will come back to you after some time. Now, verse 3 begins, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. We can take that portion of the verse alone as a proverb, and we understand what it is saying. I want you to keep in mind that the Bible was not written in verses as we see it, but it was more like a, 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 as a newspaper is. The text went straight on, similar to the newspaper. And oftentimes those who put it in verses did not really read everything down, but just where they thought to make a stop, they punctuated and put the verses in. And if you oftentimes in studying the scripture come upon a verse that, well, that doesn't make sense, it seems as though it is unfinished, go back to the previous verse and see what that says. I'll go on to the following verse and see what that says. And you would recognize, although this chapter stopped here, it doesn't sound complete until I put the other verse into it. I say that in order to get you to understand why I'm using only the second part of this verse. acquainted with fallen trees and the second part of this verse reads whether a tree falls to the south or to the north in the place where it falls there it will lie and as a topic I've chosen as a tree falls, so shall it lie. King Solomon, in the previous chapter, spoke about it is better to walk with a second person, two together, instead of one. Because if one falls, the other will be there to lift them up. And as I look at this verse, we recognize why the tree must remain where it falls. It cannot lift itself up. Some trees are fallen by men. We cut them down. And unless we pick them up from where they fall, they will remain there and rot. Some fall by storms. And unless they are cut up or uprighted by man, they remain where they fall. But listen. Not because a tree is fallen means it will die and rot. The fallen tree that still has some of its roots in the ground has one choice. Send new birds from its trunk and reach for the sun. A fallen human being rooted in Christ has two choices. Just stay there in their fallen state, wallowing in self-pity until they die, or repent of their wrongdoing, ask forgiveness, and continue with life. Amen. Psalm 51 is 
the example of a fallen man who made the choice not to lie when he had fallen. He knew that his deeds required punishment. He was ready to accept whatever that punishment would be to continue living. The life of fellowship he had with God outside of that to him would be slow death. King David went to God and said, Lord, uh, he could have said, well, Lord, why did you allow me to fall so low? You should have stopped me. No, he said to him, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. In the verse 10 of Psalm 51, he says to God, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In verse 12, he says unto him, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. See, David saw himself like a fallen tree with some roots still in the ground. And he wanted God to upright him. Again. Yes, man can make that choice. Now, I don't know what state you are in or how you look at yourself this morning. Don't throw in the towel. Your business was doing well. Then the recession hit. You thought we would have been out of it by now. But no end is in sight. Your reserves are all used up. The banks are not lending. Probably you're thinking to yourself, what's the use? I'm here to tell you this morning, don't give up. Learn from a tree. When I, when I was a boy, there was a coconut palm just across the road from the entrance where you turn off to go to French Penny. In that location now is a sign for Viceroy, a big four by eight <coughs> sign. That coconut palm was thrown down by a hurricane back in 1955. And as boys, I remember we used to walk back and forth on the trunk of that fallen palm tree. It had fallen with its top towards the south, away from the road. So it wasn't cut up, it remained there. And as time went by, I recall seeing that palm tree, the head of it, turned from being flat on the ground and started an upward growth. That growth continued while that palm was undisturbed until one day there were coconuts on it. What am I saying? That coconut palm was not willing to die because some of its roots were still in the ground. Yeah. Its natural growth is towards the sun and it found a way to reach towards the sun. Its purpose was to reproduce after its kind and it did just that. morning, which I hope will give you inspiration. This tree was passed on the way by some of you here right now. And many of you have not realized that this huge tree is laying on its side. It 
its original top is towards the south. Some of you, like I did just several years, have probably sheltered under its branches and not realized that it is on its side. You look up at it and you see it towering towards the sky still. The birds nest in it, others roost in it, and some of us partake of its fruit. I am not sure how long it was in that position. I believe it is 50 years since it was thrown down by a hurricane, probably a little more. But the least it can be is 19 years. And I'm more inclined to believe the 50 year span because had it been thrown down by Lewis, it would have been cut up. We had too many chainsaws during the time of Lewis. During the time of Donna, we didn't have any. So those trees that were not blocking the road, they remain where they fall. Yet, this tree, although it is falling, it is doing, or carrying on its life work. During the fall, many of its branches were broken off, and it was severely bruised, but it would not die. When we fall as human beings, whether it be physically or spiritually, the soul feels the pain and suffers. Just imagine when your body is broken, your spirit becomes weak and fallen. And then that slows down the healing process and for some people that healing process never ever takes place. When our spirits are broken, it's just the same. We go along feeling so melancholy as though, why me? There is no one in the world but me. Why should I feel this way? Well, found himself in a condition once where he felt so cast down in spirit that the only thing you can do to yourself when you're so cast down to your, in spirit is bottle of harm. King David found himself in such a state and said, why are you cast down, oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. But look at Him. He finishes the chapter. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. So, no matter how you may be feeling, no matter how low you think you have gone, fallen to, you have not fallen too low for God to reach you. <laughs> the old tavern tree, though fallen, will be an inspiration to you if you will let it. For although you may not look as pretty or handsome, as you did once before you fell, although in your body you carried the scars, hope in 
God and remember the purpose for which you were created. You must make your breakthrough. How many of you know where this tree is? Hmm? How many of you know? It's not in the outside. The factory. Just by the bistro there. Look at its roots. A portion of it are out of the ground. It's fallen. But look at it, still reaching to the sky. You would never have recognized it by looking at its stump. Look at the end where the top was originally. Showing the results of the fall it took years ago. The original top is rotted off. Dried up, but it is still reaching towards the skies. You and I let that old tree let me down, but we need to have a never sit down to children. One that says, Though I've fallen, yet with the roots that I have in the ground, I can still do something. What have been sent here to do? Amen. See, oftentimes we feel let down and self pity as though we are of no worth. But I want to let you know this morning whatever your condition is, you're useful to God. Try to upright it. 
they might have destroyed it. Because the few roots that were left in the ground, they might have damaged them. But they didn't attempt it. And the tree continued with its life. Yes, oftentimes it is that when you're in a broken state, others try to help to get you out of it. And they do more harm to you. But I want to let you know this morning that if you are grounded and rooted in Christ, uh, no matter what your condition is, uh, He will fix it. Uh. <laughs> and then just like this old tree, men will look up to you. They will see you and recognize you was once fallen, but now you are there. They will marvel. How did he manage to get up there? But it's God, the God whom we serve, is well able to lift you up and make you fruitful. He's well able to take you from your death. And you think uh, 
you can't make it. No matter what end of the island you live on, the valley is not far away. Just drive to that old tree. Look at it. And let it inspire you. And say to yourself, where the tree falls, it remains. But I will not. I will pick myself up and start again. Praise God. So stand and repeat it after me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready? Yes. Where a tree falls, tree falls. It, remains. it remains. But I will not. I will, not. I will pick myself up I will pick myself and start again. And start again. 